Hi there. Hey, my name is Chris Adams, president of Smadtech, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the truth about uh, cybersecurity and how much it should cost. Right? Here's the thing that you need to understand first and foremost about cybersecurity. It's not just one thing. It's a whole bunch of things. Um, and in the tech world, we call that a stack, right? So I'm going to take you through, there are 15, right? Don't freak out. There are 15 points in a really good sound cybersecurity stack. Now here's the, the crazy thing about it. Some of these things we're going to talk in here have zero cost, but they really get overlooked. So the thing for me is, you know, listen through all of this other stuff and find out and, and ask yourself, okay, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. Well, I'm not doing that, but I didn't know about that, right? Use this as kind of a, an audit for your own organization. And I'll even talk about some of the, the brands uh, that we're familiar with that are reputable. And then I'm gonna talk about what each of them should cost, right? So let's get into it. Uh, number one, first and foremost, you have to have a good firewall, right? SonicWall, Meraki, WatchGuard, uh, Palo Alto Networks, uh, Unify, Security Gateways, right? Those are all really good firewalls. Firewalls are different than modems, right? You, if you only have a modem, like from CenturyLink or Sparklight or or Comcast or whoever those are, that's a problem. That's not a firewall, which is different than a router and a Wi-Fi router. You need a firewall. Uh, so that's first and foremost. On the firewall, make sure that there are no port forwards set up, right? That is a security breach. That is not best practices in the IT world, right? That's a simple question to your IT guy. Hey, listen, do we have any port forwards set up on the firewall? Ask that question. Uh, number two, uh, there is make sure that you're utilizing white whitelisting, right? Uh, Mr. IT guy, how do you, are you getting into my firewall, right? Um, is it uh, open? Is it open, right? You want them to be using a specific either VPN into your firewall or it needs to be IP whitelisted, right? No one should have access to that firewall except for people that you give access to. Okay, uh, I would expect to pay you know, somewhere between $500 and $1,500 for a good firewall, right? For a good, you know, small business up to, you know, 250 employees. Um, number two, inside with the firewall, you're going to get the uh, traffic encryption, right? Traffic encryption is a fancy way of saying uh, VPNs. If you have multiple sites, you want to be using back office VPNs between each of those sites, right? That the data between the sites is encrypted. Um, you want to make sure that anyone uh, outside your office that's that's remoting in needs to be using a VPN. Uh, don't allow them to come in via RDP, right? You need to put one more layer of security on that with um, uh, from a remote desktop standpoint. So VPNs, right? So you, so that's number two. That doesn't cost anything. That's included and should be, uh, if, the, if the firewall uh, doesn't have it, I would be looking at a different firewall. Number three, um, a protective DNS service. Uh, this is really bit, uh, powerful because it, it's, there's no cost to this. And you could use uh, Cloudflare, you could use OpenDNS. Well, now it's a Cisco umbrella. Uh, you could use um, Cloud9. Those, those are just ways to, to provide one more layer of filtering uh, that's going on uh, in your network, right? Um, just ask your IT guy about, listen, what are we using for DNS? Are we using some DNS protective services? It's a, it's a simple question. Um, now, there are some of those services that they can add some additional stuff on the DSA protection that actually uh, do cost money, but the general uh, protective DNS service is no cost. Uh, next thing, absolutely positively, you have to have managed antivirus on your desktops, your laptops, and your servers. Okay, some good ones out there are Bitdefender, Kapersky, ESET, F-Secure, um, who am I missing on here? Avast, right? There's a lot of, uh, lot of good ones. Um, you got to have that enabled. And make sure that when you enable it that they're running 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. They're doing updates uh, and they're set up properly. That's probably the biggest thing. Um, we run into computers sometimes that get that get hit uh, with some nasty stuff, and it is a fact that uh, Windows did an update and didn't, uh, you know, turn on the managed antivirus. I would expect to pay somewhere between two and three dollars an endpoint uh, for that service. Um, next, really, really important, absolutely, is we got all of our email sending in the cloud is multi-factor authentication and two-factor authentication. Those are the same thing. Um, MFA and 2FA, right? Some kind of the acronyms. Um, if you're using Google Workspace, you're using Office 365, you need to make sure at a bare minimum, right? Bare minimum that you have multi-factor authentication turned on for your email services. Now, here's another trick. 
uh, you may be using uh, like Salesforce or eClinical Works if you're in the healthcare space. Um, maybe some in insurance programs. They may have multi-factor authentication available on those programs. If any program that you're using, like QuickBooks has MFA, two-factor authentication, make sure that you are utilizing it. Those are free, there's no charge for those services. Uh, so that's number five. Number six, I really love this one. A lot of people don't, don't know this one, it's called geofencing. Um, we've got some um, healthcare applications that are online, right, to kind of help them with some HIPAA compliance stuff. And what we've done is we've, we've provided geofence, right? So if, if one of our employees, health care workers gets compromised and they're trying, they're, they're in a foreign country or they're outside um, of town or, what, or outside the facility, they're not able to access the, like let's say eClinical Works or whatever the program is from that site because they have an IP address that is not the IP address that's tied to uh, the office, right? So that's why static IPs uh, are really important in your organization. So geofencing, right? If you have geofencing availability for whatever application you're using, make sure that you're using it. No cost for that, that's really powerful. Um, spam filtering, listen, Google Workspace and Office 365 built-in spam filters are not enough. You really need to be paying a professional to uh, manage and, and filter out that nonsense. Listen, uh, email, uh, cybersecurity is the war, email is the weapon. That's what they're using to come in and, and to get us. They're unpacking you know, all the nasty stuff from ransomware onto the computer and then they're trying to do you know, all the other uh, phishing emails and whatnot. It's all coming in via email. You have to have a good spam filter. Uh, we use, I'm not very familiar with uh, all of the spam filters out there because there is a lot, but we use Spambrella. Uh, that would be about $2.75 to $3 per box. And they have different levels uh, that you can use, but that's, that's kind of the ballpark. Really, really powerful. Um, Number eight, this is probably the hardest one to implement, to be honest with you, uh, because it's a behavioral change inside the organization. That is a password manager slash uh, security uh, piece of software. Listen, we cannot allow our employees <laughs> to use Chrome, Safari, uh, Firefox, Edge uh, to store passwords, all right? So that's, we can't, we can't, that's not where we need to be storing passwords. That's, that's terrible. Uh, the other thing is, employees' brains, right, don't have the capacity uh, to create passwords, uh, passphrases that are 12 characters and are unique for every single login. You need to take the burden off of that with your employees and you need to give them a tool, right? Give them a tool. Uh, it's a behavioral change, right? And when you give them the tool, you need to revoke access for them, allowing to save passwords on, on Google, uh, Chrome, and, you know, the other browsers. Uh, you have to do that. If you give them, here's a secret, pro tip. If you uh, don't take the ability to save passwords on the browsers, they're gonna continue to save passwords uh, on the browsers. So give them a tool. There's uh, some really good ones out there. There's OnePass, there's Dashlane, there's Keeper Security, there's LastPass, right? They're all out there. I would expect somewhere to pay, you know, somewhere between four and six dollars uh, per application or per uh, endpoint on there. All right, uh, number nine, coming in at number nine, hard drive encryption. Listen, if you got a laptop, all right, for corporate, whether it's the executive or an admin or whatever, if they're using Windows, they need to be using BitLocker. If they're using a Mac, a MacBook, uh, they need to be using FileVault. You need to be making sure that you're encrypting all laptops, okay? Uh, now, desktops. I would say you need to be encrypting all desktops, but the low hanging fruit for desktops really are the, la uh, the desktops that are sitting in public spaces, right? Where they're not, not behind locked doors, you know what I mean? Uh, we do a lot of healthcare facilities and you know, in the office and the nurses stations and whatnot. Those, those are sometimes unmonitored, right? And, and we need to be making sure that if someone decides to walk off of the PC, uh, that the hard drive is encrypted, right? And it puts in the healthcare space, it definitely puts you in HIPAA compliance. So that's powerful too. No charge for that. Those are built in. Uh, number 10, uh, we are not um, uh, uh, a cloud backup solution um, company. We prefer uh, on-site backups, right? We want our backup where it is right now. Now, the thing about it is we use uh, Synology as our backup. It'll cost you, you know, for uh, 718 or actually now 720 plus uh, or a, a 
uh, 900 series plus, um, you know, somewhere between, you know, six to, you know, $1,200 for the chassis. And then, you know, the hard drives can be anywhere from two to, to 600, depending on how much storage you have. Here's the deal. The plus series on Synology is super powerful because it does what they call snapshots. It will take your, heart, your backup and then it will do a snapshot depending on every hour or once a day or whatever. But the powerful thing about it is, and most people don't know, here's another pro tip, is that that's a read only copy. It is the protection from rans ransomware, okay? So if your computer gets hit with ransomware and it affects the other computers, it can definitely affect the backup, okay? But the thing about it is that we don't want to send the backup to the cloud because we have to recover from that. It will be terribly slow and there's all kinds of, all kinds of um, um, errors that could uh, happen in the, uh, in the transport, right, in the download. That's very, very common. So let's keep our, uh, uh, our backups on site. We like Synology, um, you know, for somewhere between 1000 and, you know, call it $1,500. Really powerful there. Okay, endpoint uh, detection and response. This is a new thing. Basically what this does is this is in supplement to the managed antivirus, right? So if, a, if, if the managed antivirus isn't aware of the bad, um, uh, uh, virus, Trojan, bot, you know, whatever you want to call it, it's not going to protect you, okay? Uh, managed antivirus can only protect you from known threats. Okay, what, what the EDR, Endpoint Detection and Response, does is it actually is looking for certain things that are happening, right? Uh, it's looking for file encryption. It's looking for, uh, you know, different things in there. And what it does is it notifies you that this is happening and then it it responds to it and shuts it down and then isolates it from the network it's very very powerful uh, one of the things that uh, we're looking at right now is a, um, a program called huntress and it seems to be really really good huntress was one that picked up the um, the kaseya uh, hack and a good edr um, um, is going to cost you, sorry, uh, somewhere between two and five dollars per endpoint, right? It's really, really powerful for that. Um, the other thing is, most people don't talk about is what, what what does the disaster plan look like if you do get hit with ransomware? I think that's a very interesting conversation you need to have. Here's what most people don't understand about a ransomware, right? Uh, if you if one computer gets hit and we get that isolated, it's still a wipe and reinstall for the rest of the network because think about it. If this computer got hit and it had all the same tools and protections as the other computers, we don't know what the threat is and we don't have the tools to, to fix it, right? So it's a wipe and reinstall. You got 20 computers, you can't do 20 computers all at once. So you have to understand, okay, what does the plan look like, right? We gotta get the server back online, right? We gotta get uh, you know the, the sales guys or the marketing guys. Um, or the operations guys, or the billing guys, whatever it is, we need to have just just work through that. The disaster recovery plan just needs to be the thought process about okay, here's what I want to have happen. Okay, that's the DR plan. No cost for that. Um, BYOD hardware. We can't allow employees to use their personal devices to do company work, right? There's we don't know what managed antivirus is. We don't know if the kids are downloading. They don't know if they're you know gaming. That 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 is just bad voodoo. Whether they're you know, uh, uh, using their laptop from home because they, they need to work remotely and, and someone sets them up with a VPN. Whatever nastiness is on that home PC or that home laptop, as soon as you uh, authenticate them via VPN, whatever nastiness is on that computer, you just put it on your network, right? So VPNs are good, but they need to be from a clean um, uh, device, right? Desktop or laptop, if that makes sense, okay? Don't allow people to use personal devices that aren't under IT management for your work. Uh, no cost, obviously, for that. That's just policy driven. Uh, education. Listen, you got to be spending an hour a month, even if it's you know uh, a half hour or just an email. There's a lot of phishing campaigns. Microsoft Office 365 has a built-in campaign where you can send out phishing emails. It's it's all about customer or or uh, employee education. All right, that's the best defense. I don't care what anyone says. You spend an hour with your team about looking for emails, that will pay you huge dividends. 
Uh, so there's, there's really no cost to that. Maybe a little bit of uh, uh, hourly time. Uh, last but not least, uh, cybersecurity insurance. Here's the deal. If you think you're going to go out, and I've got a cybersecurity application right here. If you think you're going to go out and go get a cybersecurity insurance policy to protect you from all of this stuff, i got news for you. Because here's the thing. On this cybersecurity policy, see these numbers here? These numbers correspond to the numbers in the cybersecurity stack, right? Um, so as you go through this, and maybe I need to shoot a video on how to fill one of these out because we do a fair amount of these, um, they're, they're gonna ask you, right? And here's the thing you have to understand about cybersecurity policies. Just because you answer yes or no to those um, doesn't mean that you're necessarily gonna to get denied the insurance policy. But I will tell you this, if you get breached and you don't have you know, multi-factor authentication turned on, um, you think that the cybersecurity policy is gonna cover you? Especially when you said yes and it was no, because they can go back and do forensics, right? That's a, that's a crazy thing about this, right? Everything is digital, right? Everything has a timestamp on it. They can go back and look at that. So uh, cybersecurity policies, I would reach out to your, you know, to your, um, to the person that's doing your insurance and just say, hey, listen, you know, what do you know about cyber, uh, cyber security insurance? Or you can reach out on your own. Some of the ones that uh, I know, we uh, we use Chubb here. Beasley, which is the one right here. We see a lot of those Hartford Liberty Travelers, right? There's a lot of cyber security policies. Um, and I would expect to pay, you know, somewhere between three and $5,000 a year for that. Okay, that is a very sound cybersecurity stack. Right, that's that's multiple layers, um, and the the thing for us is all of these work together. You know what I mean? Like I said, you can't just do one thing. You have to do a combination of a lot of these different things. Now, different industries uh, will, will require you know different requirements. I don't know what those are, but this is this is a pretty good list that will get you uh, really protected and put you in a position uh, to not have to deal with this. So anyway, that's what it is. I hope this film was uh, uh, um, informative for you. Listen, you reach out to your IT guy, right? And say, hey, listen, I just watched this video. You know, tell me about geofencing. Are we doing multi, you know, uh, factor authentication? Maybe we should, should sit down and do a little bit of a, a DR plan about what it looks like. That's good for him, it's good for you, it's good for the employees. So anyway, that's all I got. Uh, and I will talk to you later. Thanks, bye.